Have you seen pictures of dogs standing on balls or doing all kinds of awesome, really cool looking exercises to keep themselves fit and healthy? Have you thought that actually you could give that a go with your dog? Well, today I'm talking to the fantastic Meg Kelly all about why you should consider going to a qualified physiotherapist and what the pitfalls of DIY physio are. <coughs> Hi, I'm veterinarian Dr. Alex from OurPetsHealth.com and I help optimise your pet's health so that they can live the full and happy life that they deserve. And I started off by asking Dr. Meg Kelly about why you should consider choosing a properly qualified physiotherapist. So I think for your first consult, you want to be going to either a veterinarian who is veterinary rehabilitation trained or a veterinary physiotherapist. So it's quite a diverse field and we have lots of people coming in from all different um, areas. And um, there are some sort of short courses that offer like massage therapy. Um, that's fine. You can have someone massage your dog, but if you want like a full uh, veterinary physiotherapy assessment, it needs to be done by a qualified vet physio or a veterinarian that is, um, has done a certificate yeah. in, in rehab. But when the, the dog or animal first comes to us, we'll do a full assessment, okay? So what we really want to be doing is we want to be seeing where are the problem areas? So where is the pain? And where is the primary area that is the problem? And where are all the compensations? So we were chatting about how they alter the way that they walk and they will have all these other areas. And often, you know, we'll get cases that will come to us and, you know, the primary area actually won't be apparent. So it'll just be that, that, that compensatory injury that we will mm. see first of all. And once we treat that, then the primary area, you know, then we suddenly see there's, there's more going on here. But we'll have a, do a full assessment. We'll have a look and see um, the muscle mass. So we take measurements of their muscles to see if they are balanced. Um, we have a look at the ability for them to be able to bend and straighten their joints. Is that within the normal range? We want to see how they're moving, if they're moving symmetrically and, and balanced. Um, and we want to see what their lameness is like. We look at their posture as they're standing um, and in movement. And we do a full assessment. And then once we've done that, we create a rehabilitation plan and you mentioned earlier about, you know, sometimes, you know, it's an affordability problem that people can't afford possibly, or they're worried about you know, how much money that they've spent. And what I want to say is that, you know, it doesn't have to be the full, everything that the, the, the rehab therapist actually recommends. And often what will happen is we will say like, this is what we recommend. And depending on the clients and their affordability and their time, we can alter that um, into something that actually fits with them. So every animal has a tailor-made program. So there's no sort of, this is what we do for this condition. We look at that, that case, and then depending on the findings that we have, we make a tailor-made program exactly for them, which we can adjust um, depending on the availability of the clients and how often they can bring the dog in. And then the suggestions would, would normally be twice a week for the first four weeks. That's normally what we do. Yeah. And then we'll reevaluate them. So then we do reevaluate, we'll do measurements again to see if there's any improvements. And we really want to see that we're improving in lameness, we're improving in pain, their ability to bend and straighten their joints. Um, so we want to see and then that there's muscle growing too. Um, and then we'll adjust our program as it goes. Um, so usually they have to get into some type of maintenance depending on the condition. Yeah. Um, for those post-operative cases, especially if they're young, some of them come in and then we have a sort of eight to 12 week program. And then we often don't see them again until they become a little bit older and they start yeah. to become arthritic. For the, the, those senior dogs that are arthritic, they normally get onto some type of maintenance program where we'll be seeing them at least once a month just to maintain them, just to check that everything is, um, you know, they're doing their home exercises okay and that we are maintaining that muscle because that's the biggest thing. So you mentioned that we can do, you know, that you're going to be sending home clients with exercises to do after that assessment and that's a, a very personal individualised assessment, which I guess and it goes, you know, that's true for most medical conditions. There's always, you know, our gold standard plan A, but I think kind of my feeling is that a big part of the vet's role and the rehabilitationist as well it sounds like is to to work with our client work with our patient to 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 work within the limitations that are very often present so those options b c or d or whatever are, are, are you know just as as valid and and are certainly better than nothing but for those people who think, oh, well, it doesn't sound too difficult just standing my dog on one of those wobble boards because you do see lots of pictures on Instagram and things, what could possibly go wrong if they're not 
you know led and guided in what they should be do their dog hasn't or their cat hasn't had an assessment what what are the kind of the pitfalls of just diying it yeah i mean the problem is is that if they're not strong enough to be doing some of the exercises then they're actually using the completely wrong muscles um yeah. and so you're not actually getting the benefit they can obviously hurt themselves which is a yeah. problem and it might be something that is actually contraindicated in the condition that the animal has um so you know even if you, if you want to do exercises, what I would recommend is even just go for one consult to so get their yeah. assessment and then actually say to the vet rehab therapist or the vet physio, um, I am not going to carry on for treatments. I really just want to come here for you to assess my, my dog and to give exercises. And then two months later, you can come back again. They can reassess and then give you some more exercises to do depending yeah. on the level. And I think the thing is, is that we see all these YouTube videos and, and some of them are amazingly done. And we think, oh, and we, you know, we see dogs like standing on balls, but it's actually really difficult to do that. So, I mean, I don't know if any of you guys have ever tried to stand on a ball and um, it's not easy to do. So the dog and for the dogs too. And we basically go through levels and that's why our, our rehabilitation programs are tailor made because we assess them to see where they're at and then we decide what you know what the next level is um but you can't just put a dog on a ball so it has to do yeah. the very basics so they have to do a lot of standing exercises first before we do the more advanced exercises um, and the other thing is is that you know if there is an injury and um, you know tissues are healing at different um in different ways and do all different speeds and stuff so we want to make sure that we're not doing an exercise that is going to slow down that healing or um, inhibit that healing. Um, so it's really important that you get um, an assessment first and then do it with a vet physio. And they're very open. The vet physio will be open to working with you as long as they can assess the dog or animal on a regular basis to make sure that they're giving you the right advice. A lot of people are cost conscious, but actually physiotherapy and different rehabilitation therapy might save people money because it will reduce the risk of complications like you say with arthritis it might be able to get them off painkillers or, or just reduce the dose um, which over a long period of time could actually make a huge difference in the, the the cost of that pet's healthcare so yeah it improve recovery and actually may even be cheaper as well i guess is something to think about if you want to learn more about recovery for your dog then make sure you check out the video linked on screen now and until next time i'm dr alex this is our pets health because they're family.